But otherwise, let's actually get into Decode That Claim. All right. What are we decoding today? All right. We're decoding three products. Sweet. (laughs) And the reason why there are three products is because Gloria and I wanted to, without having to go into another antioxidant annual rant, we decided to actually, let's just look at our and get an update on the vitamin C landscape. And I think... When we're looking at this, we realize the vitamin C format has changed significantly <laughs> since the last time we looked. It is now Charizard. <laughs> <laughs> Charizard with like five tails. Yeah. <laughs> Charizard yeah. plus. <laughs> yeah. And um, we noticed that these formats are different than the ones we talk about, which yeah. the main ones are, as a reminder, is your water-based serum. Mm-hmm. You have your silicone suspensions, mm-hmm. and you also have the powders, right? Yep. Those were the three main, main squeezes. Ones. Um, but no, we are moving on. The first one I would like to share with Gloria is Kate Somerville's Mega C 30% Vitamin C Mask. And this mask is meant to be used as a wash-off mm-hmm. uh, twice a week. And you basically apply it directly on the face for 20 minutes, and then you wash off. And that's it. Yep. And looking at the ingredient list, this is a relatively, mm-hmm. it looks long, but it is in a, in, in, a, in some way a pretty simple formula. Yeah. Because it has, the first ingredient is dimethicone, second one is ascorbic acid. And we already know that this is 30%, assuming they're not lying to us, <laughs> 30% ascorbic <laughs> no, no, no. acid. So it is um, mostly silicone. It, it, you can think of this as a high level silicone suspension. And what's interesting is I, I actually almost want to just ignore the rest of everything. <laughs> there is a silicone emulsifier, peg 10 dimethicone. Mm-hmm. And after that, there's a bunch of oils. I'm sure some of them is there to help it smell nicer. I spy orange peel oil, mm. ceramide MP chilling at the end. I would ignore it yeah. because I don't know what it is there. <laughs> so yeah, for the most part, I will just look at it as a very high strength silicone suspension. Yeah, agreed. This actually does come with a consumer perception study. Mm-hmm. This is basically they look at um testing after two uses Mm -hmm. um and then four uses and after two uses 97 percent reported which means it's a consumer perception reported that skin has a healthy glow 91 percent reported skin looks and feels smoother and then after four uses 88 percent reported skin looks brighter more radiant 88 percent reported improved overall skin tone 85 percent reported more even skin tone so pretty general for a consumer perception yeah and i would say um vitamin c mass is a very it's i don't think it's a concept that's really taken off right Mm -hmm. i've seen it here and there in spas i remember one a long time ago i used a vitamin c mask that's actually made by skin circles i don't think is on the market anymore (laughs) but looking at the ingredient list what so we checked the Sephora's and Ulta's around us don't have this in stock yet, mm-hmm. so I couldn't get my hands on it before recording it. But generally speaking, I'm like staring at it like, huh, I bet this has a lot of residue after you wash it off or yes, try to wash it off. because it's a silicone suspension. And the other thing I should also mention is um, we definitely looked at some of the uh, consumer feedback. And one of the things they noticed is that it does have stinging. Mm-hmm. Um, and we should remind everyone is that Vitamin C does have a very low pH Mm -hmm. and at that high concentration for us like that makes a lot of sense. Um, And I think my general takeaway was there are we'll share some before and afters here where they show um, before and after after four uses. Mm. And I think while it sounds like a nice I feel like this is maybe like a nice ancillary product for people who like masks, Mm -hmm. but I still feel like I would gravitate toward the AHA mask yeah. over a vitamin C just because if you look at the before and afters like and you see before and afters of typical AHA peels mm-hmm. those results are still significantly better I have yeah. to say than vitamin C it's true yeah. I, I I agree and I don't know if like um this is the best way to get the most out of vitamin C, right? Vitamin C is meant to be that long-term protection for your skin. And um, I'll be honest, I 
I yeah, I don't know what this brings. Like this wouldn't replace my AHA mask. Yeah. So will I be alternating this these masks maybe mm. for a month or two? But mm. then you know, yeah. Totally. Yeah. So that's one format. Wash off masks are a thing. The next one. Oh, sorry. Oh, one more yeah, thing on the it. wash off mask. Yeah. I will say this absolutely also doesn't replace your daily vitamin C. Yeah. Use. No, that's a really good point. Um, I wouldn't expect this to to have that carryover effect. There are some mm-hmm. studies done on how like if you apply a vitamin C serum, the potency is there for like a day or two, like longer than you would expect. But at the same time, like doing something I I'm assuming no one's using it daily, right? No. So you're doing this mask like probably once a week, right? Mm-hmm. It's not gonna carry over for seven days. It's not gonna replace your daily protection. Yeah, and we should also remind people of the testing that's been done is like they use vitamin C at twenty percent every night mm-hmm. um and so think about that usage level versus one to two times a week at 30 percent. it's like as a wash off it's like the difference of like skin exposure to these topicals is completely different and so that's why we would never say like oh if you don't like a vitamin c serum use a wash off mask yeah for that, sure we would never suggest that okay Next. Now moving on. Um, second product is Peace Out's Vitamin C Glow Stick. And it is as you think. It is a stick. Vitamin oh. C in stick format. Nice. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and let's see. So they tout a 6% vitamin C blend. Uh-huh. Going through the ingredient list, um, about six or so ingredients down, you'll see... 3-O-ethyl ascorbic acid. You'll go down again, a few more oils in between, and you'll see THD ascorbate and MAP. And then one more oil after strawberry seed oil, you'll see ascorbyl glucoside. Holy crap. Uh Uh-huh. Yeah. And that's all in a wax stick formula. And then one of the things, they did have a consumer perception, although I have to say I would consider this more of a lukewarm (laughs) consumer perception study. They say after one use, 100% of participants said they didn't experience any irritation while using this product. (laughs) Okay, listen here. (laughs) That should be the norm. (laughs) After one use, they're probably like, now tell me about it. How do you feel? Yeah, not your Oh my god, this is so good. <laughs> Why is that the bar? Because Gloria, it's a hundred percent. Oh, okay, okay, cool. <laughs> High number. Sick. Well, you would love that. Ninety-four oh. percent of participants said they would take the stick application on the go. Great. Cool. Ninety-one percent of participants said this product makes their skin feel nourished and smooth. After four weeks, 91% of participants said their skin feels more hydrated and plump. That's it. That's I, literally all they I share don't about under- this product. I don't know what the point of, again, it's one of those products. I'm like, what? So it's like one of those like moisturizing sticks yeah. that people have been trying to make happen for a long time now. Stop making fetch sticks happen. <laughs> <laughs> I, the, the fetch cycles come back. Now we're back to this stuff. But I, I'm so confused by this because the vitamin C is like alone for the ride. Because mm-hmm. all of the claims around this consumer perception is like it's a hydrating stick Dick. that you bring on the go. Yes. I love that. I do, in a, in a way, I do kind of love that they didn't bother trying to make any sort of antioxidant or brightening no. or any sort of claims no. around the vitamin C. No. The C exists. Yeah. That's all you need to know. Yes, and that it's not irritating yeah. after one use. Yeah, peace out. It's like, <laughs> hey, listen, good enough for me. It should be good enough for you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, honestly, there's really not a lot to say here. Mm. Um, Gloria's absolutely right. You wouldn't see this more as, any more than a, being a hydrating stick. And hydrating, we mean like maybe an occlusive. Yeah, with the butter. You, yeah, that you use for dry patches or when you're in a pinch. But definitely don't buy this if you're looking for vitamin C. <laughs> yeah. And Not even the vitamin C derivatives. <laughs> no. And, and if, even though there's a ton of different types of vitamin C in here, the star is clearly 3 ethyl ascorbic acid, which remains to be one of our most meh forms of vitamin C. Yeah. Yeah, totally. So that's it. I think moving on, we can move on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No. No. <laughs> All right. Okay. The final product I did want to share was from Ole Henriksen. 
they have their banana bright line they have a mineral spf 30 Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. which uses zinc oxide and so basically um this IL is fat, and I don't really want to run through all of the ingredients, Thank but <laughs> we'll highlight a, a, just a couple. Um, you'll see niacinamide. There's also THD ascorbate, like 12 ingredients down. Um, there's also things like panthenol. Um, and I think the reason why we want to talk about this is because there are products that t- are, there are sunscreens that tout AOX. Mm-hmm. And just generally, how do we feel about AOX ingredients, especially like vitamin C ingredients in sunscreens. I I don't love it. Mm-hmm. I, I just don't think I feel like sunscreen formulas are generally speaking very difficult products to get mm-hmm. right. Uh, and so are vitamin C products. They're they need a team of ingredients to support them and make them really shine and perform totally. uh, to what it's supposed to do for your skin. Totally. So they shouldn't coexist. I, I just I have not seen a formula out there that has uh, that's done in a way that gives you the right SPF protection and delivers the right amount of vitamin C protection. It just doesn't happen. Yeah. No, I think that's a, yeah, generally I feel the same way. I will say there is an LRP formula. They have an AOX. It's actually quite expensive. It's like $60 a bottle. Mm-hmm. Um, that one they do on... Uh, Biclin, right? Yes, and they use Biclin. And I would say that's probably the only formula where I'm like, if you are someone that's like one and done, I'm like, I could see that being like a decent one. Mm-hmm. Um, but otherwise, I, yeah, I agree. It's just, we talk about this a lot. Vitamin C and a lot of antioxidant ingredients, not even just vitamin C, hate the formulas they're in. Yeah. So that's already a problem. And then sunscreens have their own issues. So um, should you be buying a sunscreen with vitamin C purposefully? Nah, eh, no. No. Yeah. But I will say, because this one uses THC ascorbate, which sometimes you can find on very high level serums. Yeah. Um, I, uh, I would say I wouldn't worry about layering this mm-hmm. with the Euro vitamin C serum. Some people might also ask like, oh, hey, like, like niacinamide, what happens if I over layer? I would say in this case, because it's a low level THD, I wouldn't worry about that. That's a good point. The other thing I did want to add is I can totally see this as an all-in-one. So Mm. because if you look at it, you have your water stuff, you have some oils, you've got, you even have panthenol. So I could see this as for someone who's like, just really doesn't like layering. You can really consider this as not just a sunscreen, but as a moisturizer as well. Mm Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, so that's really it. Um, those are kind of the general three formats we see that's like been pretty popular this year. We will keep tabs on this realm. So you have to use one of them. What one would you use? Oh, God. (laughs) Yeah, I'm a minimalist. I'd probably use SPF. I'd probably go with the mask. Oh, just for funsies? For funsies. And I think I'm someone that like, for me, a mask moment is not a super serious part of my routine it's yeah. more like a me time thing yeah. and i yeah i wouldn't be i wouldn't mind using that one yeah and i think just wash off you just have to let us know about the wash off yeah and i would imagine because this one doesn't have a base in it and has 30 percent vitamin c when you're washing off with water you're dissolving a lot of vitamin c and mm-hmm. getting to skin and which is what i imagine a lot of the steam comes mm-hmm. from i'm not someone that's affected by high levels of vitamin c so i'm down to try it <laughs> yeah 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 for sure no that makes sense 